Now, there's sad news this week about another former president, Jimmy Carter. The 98-year-old is now in hospice care or palliative care and is approaching the end of his life. To discuss that and the way we're reliving some of the tensions of the Carter era, let's catch up again with Barbara Heineback, who worked in the Carter White House. Good to talk to you again, Barbara. Must be a very sad time for you uh, uh, hearing the news about uh, Jimmy Carter. You know him and his wife very well. Tell us uh, your thoughts at a personal level. Yeah, um, it was wonderful working in the White House under the Carter years. One of the things that I think we need to understand about the man is he had a very successful young career for a peanut farmer from Georgia. He actually was, his first opportunity came when he was accepted into the United States Naval Academy. And he went from there to actually, be, and that naval, as soon as he graduated, he married Rosalind Smith, his childhood sweetheart. The Navy took them around the world and they lived in Honolulu, Hawaii, other places. So they had an opportunity to actually see a little bit of the world. And his dad passed away. He felt that his duty to go back and run the peanut plant in Plains, Georgia and became very quickly bored of that and decided to run for political office. So he ran for a, Senate, a state Senate seat in, all, in um, Atlanta, Georgia, and won over a very corrupt man who had held that seat mm -hmm. for a long time. And that catapulted him into the White House. Well, you know, was Chris, a I believe timing is... I believe timing is everything. And were it not for the circumstances of the almost Nixon impeachment, and he would have certainly um, been had been would have been taken out of office had it not been for that. I really do not. I wonder if Carter would have become the president when he did. He uh, was a very religious man, and as you say, comes from Plains, Georgia, and that's where he is at home now, waiting out his final days. Mm -hmm. uh, he did a lot of charitable works after the presidency. As, a, as an individual, he and Rosalind, is, was he a kind man to his staff and face-to-face? -face? Um, he certainly was. I think his strengths while he was president were he started the Department of Education, the Department of Energy, and he had the second round of the SALT talks and also the Camp David um, chats he had. I believe the nail in his coffin, of course, was our 66 hostages in Iran. Exactly. And so it was the Iran crisis that nailed his, you know, his okay. second term. He was a very kind man to his staff, and he won on, on character and honesty. That is not the ticket you typically win on in, exactly. a, you know, a national campaign. And he's remembered for that and still, and he will, will be remembered for that still. I, I just want to ask you before we go, because this gets to the nub of it, and you're a lifelong Democrat, and this is a, a tough question, but, you know, he, he, you mentioned the, the hostage drama, the, the failed attempt to, uh, to rescue the hostages in Iran. He was seen as a weak president mm -hmm. at a time of Cold War tensions mm -hmm. and Iran uh, 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 going nuts. I just feel we're reliving that now. We, we, we have a, a weak White House that's not tackling the Iran situation. We've got Russia rampant again than taking over Ukraine. And, and we're seeing in Joe Biden a bit of an echo of the Carter presidency when it comes to that weakness in foreign policy, do you think? Exactly. You would think that this administration would take a note out of the book of someone who did not have a successful uh, presidency. Um, Washington, D.C. is a very cliquish city, number one. He never made it into the elite center group, and he wasn't, the Carters were not the darlings of Washington. In addition, he was not strong on domestic or foreign policy, and I believe his biggest failure very similar to Biden. He did not know how to take risks and he didn't really ever come up with policies. He didn't have a plan in action. And so he, as soon as he hit the White House, that young career started to uh, tatter 
And mm. he, he just was not able to overcome that. And of course, the Iran crisis really um, sealed his fate. I believe he's one of the best ex-presidents we've ever had, Habitat for Humanity, which of course is a... Yep. Uh, founded by Christian organizations yeah, he's done and that. also with Millard and Lender Fuller. Indeed, a lot of great work uh, post-presidency. Thanks so much for sharing your insights, Barbara. I appreciate it. Great to catch up. Barbara Heine back there, uh, live from Wollongong. She uh, uh, worked in that Carter White House back in the day. Jimmy Carter, sadly, now in hospice care, serving out the last days of his life, we're told by the family.